Good afternoon and welcome to this episode of Piping Up, presented by the Tabernacle Choir at Temple Square. Our organist for today's recital is Brian Mathias and I'm your host, Luke Howard. Today's program opens with a fanfare by the Welsh composer William Mathias. He's not closely related to our organist today, although sharing the same family name is just one of the reasons Brian became interested in William Mathias's music. Other reasons are primarily that William Mathias wrote very well for the organ, though perhaps not frequently enough. He left only a dozen or so compositions for solo organ. Most of Mathias's best-known works are for choir. This fanfare by William Mathias was composed to celebrate the installation of a theatre organ in the town of Barry in South Wales in 1987. It can sometimes be difficult to balance who we are individually with the broader expectation of what others might expect us to be. And it's not necessarily a case of choosing between personal authenticity and the pressure to conform. Often those external expectations are also good and valuable and will help us feel part of a community. It can simply be a case of striving to find the right mix. Towards the end of the 19th century, French composers felt as if they were in a bit of a similar cultural predicament. German-speaking composers had dominated music making in Europe for more than a century, with the names of Mozart, Haydn, Beethoven, Schubert, Schumann, Mendelssohn, Wagner, Brahms and others hailed across the world as the leading musical voices of their times. The French had once enjoyed their own heyday, of course, in the Baroque era with Rameau, Lully, the Couperins, Marin Marais, Jacques de la Guerre, and other clavecinists. But the glory days of the French Baroque were long past, and French composers of the late 19th century were faced with a real dilemma. How does one make a name as a great French composer when the prevailing style and the standard against which you would be judged is largely Germanic? How does a French composer stay true to their own cultural heritage while incorporating the practices of a different culture? For Camille Saint-Saëns, these broader questions also had specific implications. Being an organist himself, the greatest organist in the world, according to Franz Liszt, Saint-Saëns was well aware of the unique historic traditions of French organ music. And 
He was also aware of the reverence appropriately due to Bach and the German organ schools. How to reconcile the two was a career-long effort for Saint-Saëns. The Prelude and Fugue in B major, opus 99, number 2, is a magnificent example of Saint-Saëns taking a decidedly Germanic form and filling it with French sounds. Did he find the right mix in this work? That's not for me to decide. He felt, though, that his organ fugues were pretty good. And that admission is both a concession to German compositional practice and a personal victory for a French composer. I hope we're all able to find a similar productive mix that respects our own valuable traditions and individual authenticity, as well as our ability to grow by embracing wholesome ideas and practices that might be new to us. Brian performs now the Prelude and Fugue in B major of Camille Saint-Saëns, German form, French content.
staying with the historical French organ tradition now, we'll hear the Récit de Cromont from the Messe pour les Couvents of François Couperin. Although he would later focus on harpsichord music, Couperin worked as an organist early in his career and published two organ masses in 1690 when he was only 21 years old. They're considered a high point in the French classical organ tradition. After the Récit de Cromon, Brian will play his own arrangement of Come, Come Ye Saints.
Brian's program closes now with two works that create a really interesting parallel with last week's episode of Piping Up. On that broadcast, Andrew Unsworth performed his own arrangement of the American folk song Shenandoah, and then closed with the prelude and fugue on the name Alain by Maurice Durufle. This week, Brian plays his arrangement of Shenandoah and follows it with the litanies of Jean Alain, a work quoted directly in Durufle's composition, which he wrote as a moving tribute to his friend and colleague. Killed in action during World War II at only 29 years of age, Jean Alain was one of the most singular, innovative voices in 20th century composition. In his 10 years of active composing, Alain produced nearly 150 works. We're lucky to have that much. It's still heartbreaking that we don't have more. So to wrap up today's broadcast, Shenandoah, arranged by Brian Mathias, followed by Jean Alain's Litanies.
Thank you for watching this episode of Piping Up featuring organist Brian Mathias. We're so glad you joined us. You are always welcome to return for the weekly live stream of these concerts and previous episodes are also available for on-demand viewing. More information about this program, including a link to submit listener requests, can be found at tabchoir.org slash piping up. Piping Up, Organ Concerts at Temple Square streams live every Wednesday at noon Mountain Time on the Tabernacle Choir's website and YouTube channel and at broadcasts.churchofjesuschrist.org.